Hey, Jim, it's good to see you and hear yeah. you. Um, I guess I want to know what everyone wants to know, which is it's kind of the wild, wild west right now, college basketball. There are people transferring all over the place and making all these decisions. Uh, can you kind of talk us through your roster and what are you hearing so far? Well, what I'm hearing is there's over 800 uh, Division I players in the transfer portal. And every Division I uh, head coach and, and assistant coaching staff are visiting that portal every day, uh, some to find out maybe who you might recruit and some to find out if your player uh, just left you. <laughs> so it, it is the wild, wild west. We anticipated this happening. Uh, we've had a number of our guys kind of announced, and we've had a number of our guys still in the wait and see mode. So the first I would say, I think you all know Chris Likes is, is turning pro. He's, does that, that mean he's going to be in the NBA or Europe next year? That, well, I, I don't think he knows yet. He's going to, you know, visit with some agents. And, and then probably in a few weeks, he'll probably make some decision about his future. Uh, I've had multiple conversations with him, and all we're doing is trying to help him. Uh, Sam Wardenberg announced uh, yesterday that he will be returning, and I am absolutely thrilled about that. If you haven't read his quote, I just absolutely loved his quote. Did you guys see that? Mm -hmm. so, you know, a very, very positive way of looking at things. He's been here a while. He'll be my second, I believe my second, sixth-year player. And the last sixth-year player was Julian Gamble. And his sixth year was awesome. Led us to the ACC uh, regular season and tournament championship. So we're very, very excited and happy to have Sam back. Uh, I met with uh, some of our other seniors. Uh, some of them are not quite ready to make, make a decision. Uh, Nasir Brooks is, is still weighing his options, Dan Gack, his options, uh, Rodney Miller, his options, um, Elijah Olani, he told me he wants to go pro, but he's going to kind of enter the transfer portal just in case uh, that the uh, pro options are, are not what he was looking for. Um, who else? Who have I forgotten? Uh, Willie Harrington, who was a tremendous contributor, especially at the end of this year, is going to graduate and, and move into the business world. So we have seven guys, I think, including, including Willie, and Willie might even be eight. So Nasir Brooks is, is on a wait and see. Oh, Cam McGusty is on a wait and see. He's, he's uh, going to explore NBA possibilities, but Lee very much open the option of returning. So uh, those guys are, are going to put into the NBA underclass advisory committee, submit their paperwork, and uh, see what the NBA says. Go now to Matt Shodell from Kane Sport. Matt. Hey, Jim. Um, so just, just to clarify, so Elijah won't be back regardless? Like he's either going to transfer or go pro is that what you're saying yes. first? okay and then i want to ask you also um you know recruiting wise i mean it's not like you're being held hostage it's a little crazy though you have so many openings on the roster like do you have to like once you learn whatever it's doing is that when you start saying okay we need this that and the other or are you already preparing for contingencies like how do you deal with that with so many roster openings that are going to be happening here potentially no we're, we're going to continue to recruit and try to to uh solidify our roster because uh, even if a senior comes back, he doesn't take up one of your 13 scholarships. That's what the NCAA determined. So as, as far as I'm concerned, uh, we, we have a certain number of underclassmen that are returning. Uh, we've got a certain number of commitments, and we're trying to balance that roster. We'll go now to David Fronis from the Sun Sentinel. David. Hey, Jim, uh, you said it kind of casually with Chris Likes, but I don't think any of us actually knew uh, he was turning pro yet. Um, Is that right? He yeah. didn't tweet that out or Instagram it out. I, I, I don't, I don't uh, think so. We've had a number of conversations. 
He's got uh, people back in Washington, D.C., who he trusts that are kind of guiding him through this process. Up next, we have Steve Wine from the Associated Press. Steve? Jim, what do you think of Chris's uh, potential in the NBA player? Well, I, I'm, I'm someone who, who uh, believes that the NBA has their own criteria for what they like. Now, there are so many things that you see, like an NBA uh, organization might uh, feel is important and others don't. Uh, there are players, and if you recall last year in the draft, uh, Patrick Williams was a very good freshman in, in the ACC at Florida State. He averaged like eight and a half, nine points a game and four or five rebounds. And he went fourth in the draft. He didn't start at Florida State. So, uh, you know, whatever those NBA guys feel is probably different uh, from one franchise to another. In my opinion, Chris had himself a heck of a three-year career here. Unfortunately, he was not able to, to complete that run. Uh, had he played this year, he probably would have graduated as the fifth leading scorer in, in school history. Uh, but with the injury to his ankle, he was never able to really uh, compete and show what he could do. So I, I don't know how to anticipate what, what prospects he might have. Next, we have Cal Friedman from WVUM. Cal? Coach, you've landed some great pieces in the transfer world before. You got Ken McGusty, Nasir Brooks, Keith Stone, Olani this season. Are there any names that we should be keeping our eye on to be coming to Miami next year? Yeah, probably about 870 or so. We, we need everything, so we're looking for everything. We're keeping an eye on the portal every day. Uh, there's 800 plus in there now. There's probably going to be another seven or 800 by the time uh, uh, the summer arrives. We'll go back to Michelle Kaufman from the Miami Herald now. Jim, I'm just wondering, um, you know, as a coach, you've been around a long time and, uh, you know, you've had great success with teams that you can mold and where players can play together for a long time, whether it's George Mason, whether it's your teams that you had here that went to the Sweet 16. Um, do you think that this, this new era, I mean, the COVID is really by just flinging open all the doors. It's really made it kind of crazy. I'm just wondering about your philosophy going forward about, does it change your philosophy about what kind of players you should choose? Um, it just seems like guys now have no commitment. They just go to a school and one year later, they're ready to transfer and go somewhere else. Um, does it make you reconsider what kind of players you recruit or is this just the way of the future and every single year you're gonna have to restock you know, three quarters of your roster? Well, uh, looking at it from a historical point of view, uh, I, I'm someone that, that uh, has been at it for at least a few years, as you mentioned, and um, the culture has completely changed. Uh, almost every college basketball player, I don't care what level he's at, low major, mid major, high major, whether he's a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, fifth year senior, transfer student, the main goal is to get to the NBA. And I think that's tragic. I, I think you should go to college to get your degree. And if an opportunity comes along that you can't pass up, well, you know, go for it. But right now it appears that especially with the NCAA rules, um, changing from having to sit out a year to being eligible right away, kids are gonna look at the transfer portal as their vehicle for success. That there's a very good chance in their minds that the grass is greener someplace else. But as we all know, in, in life, uh, that, that's not gonna be true for everyone. It's gonna be true for some. Transferring can be very, very helpful. I thought it was for uh, Angel Rodriguez, for Sheldon McClellan, for Kamari Murphy, for Shane Larkin, uh, 
but for some transfers, it, it's going to be disappointing. And when it is, they'll transfer again. Right? It's, it's very, very challenging when the culture is, uh, what have you done for me lately? Uh, there's no building a foundation where you bring in a freshman, he sits on your bench uh, till he's a junior and develops in the, in the system. Now it's come in as a freshman, play right away, prove that you're good enough for the NBA, submit your name to the, the uh, NBA draft and go pro. Now there are even uh, kids now going directly to the G League uh, instead of going to college. So education has taken a back seat. And yet I'm very, very proud of our graduation rate. All these guys, you know, Angel Rodriguez graduated, Jill McClellan graduated, Davon Reed graduated, uh, DJ Vasilovich graduated, and all our seniors right now, you know, uh, Sam Wardenberg announced he's coming back. He's already got his undergraduate degree. He's going to have his master's degree this summer. And he'll be working on a second master's. I think that's, that should be a, um, a applauded and he should be complimented for making such a commitment uh, to his education and to our basketball program. But we're not likely to see a lot of that uh, in the future. One quick follow-up. Does it make you enjoy your profession less? I mean, this isn't what you've built a career on. Well, you know, quite honestly, what I enjoy is getting on the court and just working with guys. Whether a guy is a freshman, a transfer, a senior, it doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is the three things that we uh, preach all the time. Attitude, commitment, and class. Attitude, we want everybody to have a positive attitude. Understand that life is 10% what happens to you, 90% how you react to it. And that there's always going to be adversity in your life. Not just in basketball, fighting for playing time, you know, trying to win. But long after the basketball days are over, you're going to have adversity in your life. The commitment is just all about trying to be the best you can be in everything you do. Be the best student you can be. Be the best basketball player you can be. Be the best citizen you can be. Be a, 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 a contributor to your community. And then class is about behavior. Behave in a first-class manner, whether you're a student athlete, a professional basketball player, or you know, working in the business world. Just set a good example for others to follow. And that's what we preach every day to our players, and we're going to continue to do that, whether a young man is with us for one year or six years. Thank you. Next, Chris Stock from Inside BU. Chris? Yeah, have you received commitments from Isaiah Wong, Harlan Beverly, and Anthony Walker to return? And if so, your thoughts on moving forward with those three? Um, well, when you say a commitment, I, I, I've spoken to each of them. Uh, Harlan Beverly is, um, I, I think, uh, and I don't like to put words in, in my player's mouth because I didn't speak directly to him about this. But I'm very, very confident Harlan will be back for his uh, third year at the U. feel very, very confident that Anthony Walker will be back. And I'm very confident that Isaiah Wong will, will fill out the, the underclass uh, advisory uh, uh, forms to, to get a feel from the NBA as to what his status might be should he declare for the draft. So we'll have to wait and see uh, what, what uh, the underclass advisory committee comes back with their assessment of Isaiah, because he obviously had a great sophomore year. We'll go to Josh White from WVUM now. Josh. Hi, Coach. Two questions for you. One just on Adam Fisher, and I know he took a job at Penn, at Penn State, gone back to his alma mater. Uh, just him, his impact on your program. And then secondly, I know you mentioned uh, looking at all the names in the transfer portal and all the names that are going to be added. Are you still looking at potential high school guys to add as well? Yeah, that, the last question I'll answer first. The answer is yes, we will look at high school guys just like we look at anybody else. Whether you're a transfer or international student, we're just looking for the best student athletes that fit the vision we have for our our program. As far as Adam Fisher is concerned, 
He was with us for eight years. He did a fantastic job. First as the director of basketball operations where he did such an amazing job. I was, uh, when I had an opening to replace uh, Eric Conkle, we elevated uh, Adam and he was a terrific assistant coach, did a great job in recruiting, developed a great relationship with our players, did a heck of a job um, as a coach on the court, working with the players on their skill development. He was our offensive coordinator, so he did a great job in that category as well. Um, I think uh, going back to his alma mater is a, a, a really nice step. Uh, I think for his career, getting a very nice pay raise and a new title of associate head coach is a, a step towards his ultimate goal. He wants to be a head coach in Division One, and I think uh, this will prepare him for that. We will miss him. Go back to Steve Wine from the AP now. Uh, Jim, getting uh, uh, Cam back would obviously be a boon to the roster. Can you talk a little more about his decision? Is it, if it's not the NBA, would he come back or would he consider a pro career in Europe? And what is his academic situation? He'd be going for an advanced degree, I guess? Well, he will graduate uh, in, in May or in a session of summer school. I, I, I just talked to our academic support people about that, but I think he's done in May. Um, and then uh, I, I think his focus is on proving that he can play in the NBA. So I think if his prospects don't look great uh, when the, the report comes back from the advisory committee, uh, I think there's a very good chance Cam will be back in a Miami uniform next year uh, if the, the advice from the NBA is, yeah, go back and play another year. We've got time for two more. We'll go to Chris Stock and then Michelle Kaufman. Chris? Yeah, I was curious about um, Ja'Kai Robinson and, and Nicene Poplar, your, your two signees, you know, just how they're doing, um, kind of your hopes for them, and maybe when you expect them to arrive. Um, Wooga Poplar is still playing. His team, what's today? Thursday? I think they played at night, if I'm not mistaken. They've, they've been in this, they're in the state championship. Uh, Wooga made a... Uh, three-pointer at the end of uh, the semifinals last week uh, to win the game. He's having an incredible uh, senior year. He's a very gifted athlete who can shoot. And then Ja'Kai Robinson, his season has uh, been a little bit more of uh, an up-and-down year because of COVID, but uh, he's, he's doing very well. well. We expect both of them uh, to be here hopefully in uh, summer school uh, and be able to go through a typical uh, summer before freshman year. Uh, unlike last summer with COVID, I think these guys will be here uh, taking summer classes and preparing for uh, the fall. Our last question comes from Michelle Kaufman from the Miami Herald. Michelle. Jim, I'm gonna go back to Chris Likes for a minute. Um, you know, you said that, you don't, you know, the NBA, some teams like certain things, some teams don't, and that people in D.C. are advising him. Um, it doesn't sound, I mean, unless I'm reading it wrong, do you think that this is the right decision for him, or do you think he would have been better off coming in and spending another year in college? Well, let me, let me put it this way. Chris is going to be very excited when he has his degree. He would not be that excited about having to try for another degree, a master's degree. Mm -hmm. he, he's a basketball player. He loves being on the court. He loves competing. He loves playing. And he told me, hey, I want to make some money at this. I want to make as much money as I can. You know, basketball careers are often cut short by injuries and what have you. And he's had his share. Uh, if you recall, he had shoulder surgery after his freshman year. He had knee surgery last summer. He had the ankle sprain. So I think in, again, I don't want to put words in anybody else's mouth, but I think in his mind, they've accomplished all the things I want to in college. I want to try to accomplish some things as a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. 